The armies of Olympus breached the walls of the Kingdom of the Sun's holy capital. The battle had become like a cataclysm for Egypt. The city was burning and the death toll mounted. The leader of the attacking army, Ares, dragged the defeated body of Honor to the palace doors. Ares declared his victory to Ra, saying that everything was for him. Honor, the mightiest, was no match for him. No one was. The wise Ra said that gods were measured by more than just skill in battle. His father Zeus knew this. Ares reminded Ra that his forces had been crushed, his city had fallen, Ra was defeated. Tossing Arna's body aside, Ares demanded that Anubis be surrendered, so that he can take his vengeance for the murder of Zeus. Ra revealed that he had Anubis sent away, so that he can't be subjected to Ares's vengeance. Scowling, Ares asked to know where Anubis was. But Ra said he saw through Ares. Athena came before and sought justice, but her reason was clouded by grief. Ares, however, only sought blood. He declared Ares a lesser man. Anger surged through Ares as he punched Ra in the face, causing the Egyptian god to topple over. He slammed Ra over and over and over as he shouted that he was no one's equal. When Ares' anger simmered down a bit, he released Ra and gave his soldiers orders to put Ra in the dungeons. Before they dragged Ra's unconscious body away, he also demanded them to bring him Ra's eyes. An ominous symbol of doom appeared in the sky which was noticed by all the world. Neith looked up and saw that the sun had gone dark, as if clouded by the moon. But this was no ordinary eclipse. She immediately knew that something terrible had happened to Ra. The thread of Mercury spoke to her from his grave, asking if Ra was dead. She shook her head and said that he still lived, but that the eye of Ra no longer brightened the sky. He asked if she would stay with him until it was time. She assured him that she'd be there until the darkness came. The armies of Asgard stood prepared and waiting on the Bifrost, a rainbow bridge that connected the world of man and Asgard. At the head of the army stood Thor with his mighty hammer Mjolnir, and Hel armed with a large cudgel. Their aim was to guard their home and face off against the thunderbolt-wielding Loki. Their attention was caught by the blackening of the sun. Thor, shocked by this new strange phenomenon, asked what it meant. Hal said that it was a sign. Suddenly, thunder roared and Loki appeared in the sky before them with Zeus's thunderbolt in hand. Thor realized that Hal spoke the truth about Loki being the murderer and thief of the thunderbolt. He demanded that Loki surrender or be crushed by him. Loki found pleasure taunting Thor that he had to have an army in order to stop him. He said that if Thor sought guilt, then all he had to do was look upon Hal for she was the one who orchestrated the murder of Zeus. It was she who wanted the thunderbolt for herself. She wants to break Fenrir's chains and unleash Ragnarok. The Asgardians looked at Hal with disbelief, wondering if what Loki said was true. Thor, however, didn't buy Loki's accusations, for they were lies from the trickster god. Suddenly, Sun Wukong appeared from above, declaring that Loki wasn't wrong. Hal had stolen his cudgel and killed Ao Kuang to keep him quiet. The cudgel she held could help break the chains of binding Fenrir. This wasn't the only surprise. Suddenly someone else appeared with tremendous speed. Athena arrived with the aid of Mercury's winged sandals. She raised the spear at Loki, declaring him the murderer of her father and friend. Thor ordered the attack. Loki smiled with excitement and ushered forth the power of Zeus's thunderbolt. The battle between gods broke out. Athena and Thor attacked Loki, while Sun Wukong fought against Hal, who was wielding his cudgel against him. Loki threw the lightning bolt at the army. Thor jumped in to block the attack with his hammer, but the attack was so large that some of the soldiers were still caught in it and perished. 
Loki mockingly asked who the God of Thunder was now. Athena attacked him from behind, sending Loki flying and then threw a spear at him. Loki pulled out his daggers, blocking the spear and laughing at her losing her weapon. Except she didn't part with it. The fake weapon faded into nothingness as she attacked him with his guard down. But her attacks phased through him and the real Loki appeared behind her, striking her directly with a blast from the thunderbolt. The blast sent her flying off of the bridge. With the agileness of a monkey and his incredible brute strength, Sun Wukong managed to rip his cudgel out of Hal's hands. However, this freed up her hands and she retaliated with powerful dark magic. He dodged the attack and came down swinging hard with his cudgel. However, she disappeared into the shadow of Asgard above before his cudgel landed. Athena managed to return to the fight thanks to the feathered sandals of Mercury. She refused to let Loki escape again. Today, he would die by her hands. Thor attacked by throwing his hammer and Loki threw his thunderbolt. The two titanic forces clashed and exploded, sending them flying backwards, crashing into the ground. Before Loki could recover, Hal appeared from the shadows and took the thunderbolt laying beside him. She told him to stop being so weak. It made her look bad. She then immediately disappeared into the shadows before Loki could stop her. Athena appeared behind Loki like a predator stalking its prey, ready to strike. Meanwhile, Neith, feeling the fates of those in the battle above, drew an arrow on her great bow and aimed up at the sky. She released a world weaving arrow and it flew towards its fated target, all the way towards the battle at the base of Asgard. The fleeing Loki didn't even see it coming. The arrow pierced his leg, making him fall to the ground once again. Athena didn't give him another chance. She charged after him and pinned him down with her spear. She asked if he had any last words. Loki said words were for those who didn't achieve anything and that his actions would forever be his legacy. A moment passed and Loki asked why she waited. She contemplated that he caused a lot of pain and ruined many lives. He grinned, saying he regretted that he didn't do more. She thought about her father and read her a weapon, but then remembered the words of Ra. Tears streamed down her cheeks and she lowered a weapon, saying that he would face justice, not vengeance. Thor apprehended Loki and mocked him by saying who the fool was. Loki said that Thor was the fool. Everyone was the fool. Hal had gained what she wanted. Fenrir would be loose and the world would come to ruin. The end of the world was coming. Hal wasted no time. She appeared within the prison where Fenrir was bound. The great black wolf asked if it was time. Hal raised Zeus's thunderbolt and slashed all the remaining chains that held Fenrir bound. At last, I am free, Fenrir growled as he clenched his claws and let out a big howl. The howl was heard all over the world. Hades looked out into the dark night. Guan Yu and the Jade Emperor felt the howl as well. Ares, still in Egypt, paid it no mind. Those who were in the Battle of Asgard stood before Odin in his throne room, with Loki tied and subdued at their feet. The roar left everyone with a cold shiver running through their being. Odin announced that Ragnarok had begun. Mercury trudged along knee deep in murky water. He found himself in what looked like a cold, dark, gloomy cave. There were scattered pillars all over, connecting the floor with a rocky ceiling. He asked Honor where he was. Ao Kuang answered him, saying that this was Hades' domain. Zeus walked up to him and suggested that they all get out of there. (laughs) 
Hey guys, thanks to everyone who watched and enjoyed these lore videos. I had a ton of fun making them. These particular three videos covered Titan's Forge's first attempts at creating real lore for the game Smite. They are a summary of the events that happened in the Smite comic book called Smite the Pantheon War, published by Dark Horse Comics. If you're interested to read the comic, I would definitely recommend it. You get a lot more story details and gorgeous art out of it. Go ahead and follow the link in the description, it's not that expensive. My original idea behind these videos was to make it similar to an audiobook, but it's developed into something a bit more complex, a so called Audiobook Plus. I read your comments, some suggested better music, more animations, using the 3D models, and more, but unfortunately, I don't see me changing this format too much. I want to keep these videos easy to produce rather than taking a week just to animate one video. But still, you can expect an upgrade of sorts in the following videos. I'm forced to change things up regardless. The following story saga will follow straight after the events of this comic, and I intend to present it all to you here as well. But since it's all written text, I'm not necessarily forced to write my own script. What do you guys think? Shall I read the story out for you all? which might include some terrible voice acting from me? Or do you prefer to stay with this summary style? Please let me know what you think in the comments, or upvote the comment you agree with. I plan on making two little side videos about the story so far, before I continue with the main story. Just for fun stuff. Lastly, there will be no fixed schedule for when a video will come out. So subscribe and smite that bell button to be informed whenever it comes online. See you all in the comments.